Hello guys and welcome back to another video on the Johto Solar Run series on the Retro Brown channel. As you can see wiggling in front of you, we have Porygon 2 for today. The upgrade rev evolution of Porygon. And genuinely, I love this guy's design. I love Porygon, I love Porygon 2. Even like Porygon Z to be honest, I just think the cool Pokemon. It is the normal type Pokemon with a base stat total of 515, which is phenomenal for Gen 2. Very good stats all across the board, even, even though it's only got 60 base speed, it's still pretty good. And look at that level up move pool and the TM move pool. I needed this run. We've had some very poor Pokemon come up recently. And you know what? I think it was time to have one of these good Pokemon come up. So, let's have a ch quick chat about the moveset we can actually get. At level 12, we can get Psybeam. It's level 12, 1, 2. Pretty much we can have that by the time we get to Faulkner. And Duck 2 is going to be fantastic because there are not many Pokemon in the early game that are resisted to Psychic types. Wait, well, Psychic type moves, sorry. We also get Agility at level 9. Now I've got a really cool strategy that I want to implement right at the big, at the end of this game. But it means I'm going to have to keep Agility for the entirety of this run. You'll soon see what happens. So, let's get started on our run. We can go against the rival here, and we do start off with a pretty alright move set, really. Tackle as a damaging move, but we also get conversion and conversion 2. Now, difference between conversion and conversion 2. Conversion 2, it changes your type to one that their attacking moves resi like, resist. So, if it changes to the rock type there because he's only using tackle normal type moves. Meaning, <laughs> we're basically a rock type Pokemon for anyone who uses a, a, a normal move. We're going to choose Wacko for the rival today, one of my longest, probably my first subscriber, one of my best friends in real life. And, <laughs> funny coincidence, Silver actually has red hair, so does my mate. <laughs> he's a ginger. <laughs> and he's going to he's gonna hate me for that. Okay, so let's move on to Faulkner. We're at level 9 here. We've used Conversion 2 to change into the Ghost type. Now, as well... This actually doesn't play into our favour by using Conversion 2. Because when he uses normal type moves, we change into the Ghost type. When we when he uses Gust, we change into the Steel type. And then he uses Mud Slap to take us down. So, I'm actually thinking it's going to be worth our time. Let's go and get Psybeam before we even attempt Faulkner again. And the best place for that is to go to Sprout Tower. Pretty much all the Bell Sprouts at level 3 give you about 50 odd experience. A lot of them there, so you can get up levels pretty quickly in this early game. And of course, while we're here, we might as well go against the final Sage, but of course, I've not put that footage in. Let's go against Falconer again with Psybeam, and this is how quick it makes the fight. We have lost a little bit of time by going via Sprout Tower, but it's going to be worth it. We'll make up that time just from having Psybeam alone. We also pick up Mud Slap, which of course we can't learn in this run. And we'll move on to Azalea Town. So, because we've got Psybeam, all the rockets generally do have normal uh, poison Pokemon. Yeah, it, Psybeam is a fantastic move to have this early on, and it completely changes this run. It's super effective against the Ghastly. It's super effective against the Zubat for the rival. And the Bearleaf, it can't really do too much to us. We do get poisoned, annoyingly, and Razorleaf does massive damage. And, yeah, I just wasn't paying attention there, so we do take a loss here. Level 17, we're not going to learn another move until level 20, where we get Recover. Yes, we actually learn Recover at level 20. This level up moveset is insane. To get Recover in Psybeam so early on is absolutely phenomenal. We've got such longevity in battle. We've got such power output. It's ridiculous. I love this Pokemon. So, Duck 2 has now gone against Bugsy. We've got a pretty good matchup. Although Psychic is not super effective against Cypher, it's still a very powerful move and we take a first time win. Level 19. Let's... We also pick up um, Fury Cutter, which of course we can't use. Let's move on to Goldenrod, and let's go against Whitney. So, because we've got Recover 2, we've got a fantastic moveset here with Agility, Recover, Conversion 2, and Psybeam. And by changing into that Steel type because of Conversion 2, they are not doing much damage against us. 
so we can keep our HP up, we can set up the agilities, and then we can move on to the mill tank. So even though it uses rollout, I don't want to change my type now. Three side beams is more than enough to take it down, and we can move on to Morty, which, considering the moveset we've got, is going to be a very easy trainer to beat. Let's see how we do though. If we get put to sleep and outsped, this could be a problem. But at level 25, we outspeed the Ghastly, we outspeed the Haunter, do we outspeed the Gengar? We don't when we get put to sleep, which is bad. This is very bad. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, we, let, we, we wake up. And just last off is the Haunter, and we get a first try win against Morty. What a run this has turned out to be. We pick up TM30, which of course we can't even learn. And if you're in the lighthouse, if you, you can pick up an Aoife there, talk to Jasmine, and then if you've got Dig, you can dig out of there. But if not, use these side bits to jump all the way back down. And you're pretty much out in a few seconds. That brings us on to Cyanwood City as well. After we've healed up, we're going to go over to the west of Oli Olivine. Pick up strength from this guy. And that means that we can now head over to Olivine City. Now we actually... You might think this might be a good matchup considering we do have Psybeam. But remember, we're a normal type Pokemon. And this is a fighting type gym. This took me a little while to get past. But the two Dojo Brothers at the start were very difficult. So when I finally got through to him, it was the hit. It was too fair. It was just the Hitmonlee that was a problem. Hitmonchan, not much of a problem whatsoever. But we will need to heal up before we progress through the gym. And I don't think we're actually going to have too much of a problem against Chuck. Yes, Dynamic Punch will probably take us out in one. But Prime Ape pretty much tries to set up. We have also gone back to Goldenrod, and we retaught. Well, we not retaught. We went to the game corner. We got we gambled for a bit, and we got Blizzard. So I have lost some time by gambling. Just like in real life. <laughs> Don't gamble, kids. It's bad for you. Anyway, we beat Chuck first time. And move on to Olivine City. Now, this is the reason why I wanted Blizzard. Because Jasmine's Magnemites are going to be annoying. We get paralyzed. We get thunderbolted. And, yeah, Blizzard doesn't even take them out in one. We do get a lucky freeze. And we can recover. But they defrost and just completely decimate us. We need either better luck or we need to just progress on and come back later. If you just go into the west, sorry, the east of Ecruteague City, you can pick up Goldines there, which are going to be good HM mules for later on in the fight, in the in the run. Let's try our luck against the Red Gyarados. So, we have Psybeam on our moveset, we can fuse it, it goes for Leah, Dragon Rages us, and a couple of Psybeams just takes it down. Pretty easy battle. We're actually quite a low level for this part of the game compared to a lot of my other ones. We talk to Lance and then we go find him hyper beaming this guy in the, in the house. That starts off the rocket side quest. And of course we've got these trainers just before the electrodes. They're not too bad to go against. I'd say the biggest problem here is going to be the fact that Psybeam won't take out all the Pokemon. They have a Murkrow on their team which is resisted. It's a dark type Pokemon. This is why we have Blizzard as well. Blizzard is a very fun, is a, an easily accessible move and fantastically powerful move as well if you can learn it. So, once you've beaten those trainers, of course you've got to murder these electrodes, which always makes me feel a little bit sad every time I go about this. These electrodes are just there doing their jobs and we come in and we just kill them. I mean, this one just decides to, it looks at us and goes, no, no way, I'm, I'm you're not taking me alive and then just self-destructs. <laughs> we also had the chance to learn Tri Attack, which I don't actually want to learn. We pick up HMO6 from Lance, and that means we can move back over to Olivine City to give another to give Jasmine another try. And I'm not too sure we're actually gonna have too much of a good good matchup against us, so instead we'll go against Price first and see how we do. We don't even go into this fight on full HP. This is how confident I was that we do alright. So we're gonna get a few agilities up just to outspeed, recover where needed. And Psybeam got the Dugong down as needed. Having Recover on our moveset just makes this so much easier. I can get a lot of first try attempts on these on these runs. So, we've actually... Yeah, Psybeam needs to do bigger damage. And eventually we take down the Dugong. So we've only got Blizzard to work with for this pile of swine. It's going to do big damage. <laughs> Both Blizzards miss. And then he actually takes us out with a Blizzard himself. This is one of the downsides of using a powerful ice type move like that. Blizzard 
Yes, it's got fantastic power, but it's got 70 base accuracy, which is not good. Really not good at all. So on our second attempt, we're going at full HP with full PP as well. And this makes the fight a lot, lot easier. Dugong uses rest, which is really annoying. And yeah, we're going to have to resort on Blizzard. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> okay. So we confuse the Dugong, hit self confusion, and give us an opening to take it down. That leaves us just with the pile of swine. I'm just going to go for Psybeam this time around. We get the confusion. We got a lot of confusions in this fight. This is actually really weird. And this became one of the most drawn out battles in the entire in the entire run. I cannot believe how long that attempt took us. It might have been worth our time learning Thunder at this point just for that game. But considering how long it takes to get coins in the casino, not worth our time really. I would rather just... Yeah. <laughs> So let's have a go against Jasmine again. <sighs> I'm not too sure how we're going to do here. So, Blizzard is still not one-shot in the Magnemites, and we are paralysed. Not great, but they're not really doing too much damage with Thunderbolt. We can recover when needed, but we're on 2 HP, and yeah, all we've got is... Yeah. If we don't get paralysed, we can win this. So, Blizzard, now one shot on this attempt. Does... <laughs> oh, wow. Nearly, nearly. Blizzard again. Does big damage on the Steelix. They're going to recover here with the Hyper Potion. And we get the Freeze. And then they Defrost. Oh, Iron Tail nearly took us out there. I mean, it's a very close win. Very, very close win, this one. That kicks off the second half of the Rocket Side Quest. And we can see how we do against the executives in this run. This one here has six poison Pokemon. So as you know, with Psybeam, this is going to be a complete whitewash and just give a, just handing us experience for our, our duck. It's literally looking at them going, just give me your experience. And yeah, we nearly get up two levels in just that one fight. That leads us on to the rival fight. So the rival in the underground... This is one of the more, more difficult fights in the entire game for him. I would say the Azalea Town probably is the hardest rival fight. But yeah, this one is pretty difficult as well. Not for us though. I mean, Blizzard is just doing good damage. The only real threat was the Sneasel that resisted both our moves. But Meganium... <laughs> Great. Okay, let's let's use Agility and get our, um, our speed up. Razor Leaf's not doing too much and we can just use Psybeam to take him out. It's going to take three Psybeams. It's quite a comfortable win. Brings us on to the end of the Rocket side quest. But, to be fair, I didn't want to show that one. We showed the other executive. Let's go against Claire. And as you can see, we are sweeping her with Blizzard. It's exactly what we're going to see. All the Dragonairs go down to a Blizzard. And that brings out the Kingdra. We are going to use Agility to get our speed up. Just in case they do paralyze us. Recover our HP. And we're going to have to use Psybeam to get through. I am actually trying to PP stall out Surf here. Because... It's doing quite a lot of damage. <laughs> I should have used enough recover. Why don't I learn? Okay, let's try this again. So, Blizzard, again, best pl best player for these Dragonairs. Each one goes down, not a problem whatsoever. Let's get the side beams up. So, side beams doing decent damage. To be honest, side beams starting to lose its potency. It might be worth me actually changing over to using return for a little bit. Or waiting until we can actually get Psychic in Kanto. I don't know yet. Either way, we need to get rid of that Hyper Potion, which we have done. It's Confused, which helps us. And that last bit of Confusion damage gives us enough to actually take it out. So, second try victory. And that brings us on to the Elite Four. Well, I say that. We need to go and pick up the Dragon Fang first. And, of course, Claire has a little bit of a uh, Whitney Bitch Cry. And won't, won't give us the badge until we've gone and collected the Dragon Fang. So once you've done this little bit, which honestly is just annoying. Like, why do I need to go and do this? Just give me the badge. Once we've done this, we can move on to the, the Elite Form, Victory Road. And that gives us our final fight against Wacko. So we haven't really changed our move to set up at all. So we're going with Blizzard for the Sneasel. It's all we can really do. Because Psy Psybeam will not hit it. Blizzard takes out the Golbat in one. And now all we've got to work with is Psybeam. Which isn't great. 
But thankfully the Magneton is not too much of a problem now. But we are paralysed. Sidebeam will do big damage on the Haunter. And big damage on the Kadabra. I am going to use Agility here because... There's not really too much damage this Kadabra can do to me. And I can use Recover here. Get our speed, but speed up. And we can outspeed now to actually do some damage and hit first. This is why we've kept this is one of the reasons why we've kept agility this long. So we have been hit by quite a lot of things and paralysis is just booning us so much. So when we can finally get enough damage done onto him, we can still take quite an easy victory regardless of whether we're paralyzed or not. This brings us over to the Elite Four, and of course first up is Will. Will is a psychic type trainer. We're not psychic type, we're just a normal type, but with very powerful psychic moves. Psybeam is going to help us out here because I don't really want to use too many blizzards when he hasn't brought the second Zatu or the Executor out yet. The slow bro I'm worried about because we don't have a super effective move for it. Except, well, to be fair, we've only got resisted moves, so Psybeam is what we're going to have to use here. And all I'm hoping is he doesn't use Amnesia. So, gradually we take the slow bro out with Psybeam. That brings us to the Zatu, where Blizzard can comfortably take it out. And we take a first time win against Will. Next up is Koga. You know what? I don't think we're going to have too much of a problem here. Psychic types are pretty powerful against his, his Pokemon. Venomoth comes out, and then it goes... Ooh, it does get us poison, which is annoying. Fortress is protected by... Oh, oh, okay. We might have a problem here. He keeps using Protect... And that's stalling us out, and then explosion. Yeah, okay, that sounds about right. That sounds about right for a, re a retro brown run. <laughs> as long as we don't get poisoned here, we should be fine. Venomoth goes for Super Sonic this time, and misses. And now we're onto the Fortress. So we're going to go for Psybeam. He sets up Spikes, which is pointless because we've only got one Pokemon. Duck 2 goes at level 30, 53. And Psybeam is still doing really good damage. The move that we've had since level 12. It's just decimating the entire Elite Four. That brings us on to Bruno. I don't think we're going to have a problem with Bruno. We've got massive 105 special attack stat. We've got side beam on our moveset and we're still not able to take out a hit one. That's kind of annoying. But we can set up one agility which gives us a little bit of breathing room. When double kick does massive damage. Okay. Mac Punch is going to hit here. And... Oh no, we've got Cross Chop to deal with now. Okay. That's annoying. Let's try this again. Okay, I have level. I've used one of my rare candies here. Pretty much, I just wanted to... I just wanted to get up one more level and see if it made much of a difference. And to be fair, it kind of did. High Jump Kick did do big damage. But it came down to look of how we beat Bruno here. So, we're going to use Recover... And try and stall out Mac Punch because we want to be in as much HP as possible when it comes to that matchup. Once we're on quite a bit of HP, we're going to recover back up. Mac Punch is only doing around about 330 damage, really. So we can recover more than he's dishing out. And eventually he will run out of Mac Punches. I think he's got about 20 PP. Either way, even a critical hit will not take us out. So once we've fully set up. 146 HP, yeah, you know what? Let's just go for it. Cross Chop does big damage and we tank it on 43 HP, which brings out his final Onyx and we take the win. So, two tries for Bruno. I'm not honestly all too surprised by that. Let's see how we do against Karen. So, Blizzard is going to have to be one of our main moves and we have now got rid of Psybeam. Return is just going to be a lot more flexible to use, especially with Lance coming up. So, Blizzard does big damage on the Vileplume. Gengar is going to have to take a Blizzard, and thankfully he does curse. Ah, oh, we've run out of PP. That's a reset. <laughs> Maybe I should have kept Psybeam just for one more battle. But it just does return to so much more damage than it, and we can't hit any of the Dark types with a Psybeam. So we're going to set up, even though we've been paralyzed, we're going to set up a few agilities. That way, we can always outspeed. We need Blizzard to hit, and it does... <laughs> <laughs> okay, we really need Blizzard to hit on Gengar. We are cursed, but we do have Recover to help us out here. I'm going to use one Recover here before using Blizzard on Murkrow, and that leads us on to the final Pokemon, which is Houndoom. I was worried about how much damage that Flamethrower would do, and of course a critical hit does massive damage. 
Thankfully, we get a crit as well, and we take the win, leading us on to Lance, our final challenge for the Elite Four. With Blizzard, this shouldn't be too much of a problem. And the biggest problem we've got to deal with first, really, is that Gyarados. Two returns should be more than enough to take it out, and it does set up the rain, which does help us in one circumstance. Blizzard misses, but also Thunder Wave misses as well. In <laughs> and then he hits Hyper Beam. Yeah, I think we're, we're probably going to lose this now. He hits another Hyper Beam. I can't use items, what am I doing? Yep, let's take the loss, let's try again. So, level 56, we're actually a really good level for this. And we need Blizzard to hit, we don't need Thunder to hit. Come on. Blizzard hits, okay, that's good. Blizzard hit again, thank you. We really needed that. And Aerodactyl, we need to outspeed. We don't outspeed, but Hyper Beam doesn't do too much damage, strangely enough. Charizard is next, and we are going to recover here. Flamethrower is very powerful, but it's not doing too much because we have pretty good special defense. Two returns will take out the Charizard, and we can recover to get as much HP left for that final Dragonite. We could stall out Flamethrower, but to be fair, I think we've got enough for what we need to win. One Blizzard can take out the final Dragonite, and we become the champion. Meaning, we've done this at level 57. There's not many, there's not too many solo runs I've done in Gen 2 where we've been under level 60, so this is quite a good run. We finish this, of course, at level 57. Porygon 2, Duck number 2. We've got Pidgey, Bellsprout, Krabby, and Goldie as our HM, HM horse, as I like to call them. And we finished at 4 hours and 32 minutes. That's pretty good. That's, that's probably an A to your Pokemon, that. That is probably an A to your Pokemon. I'm quite happy with how that run went. But of course, this is Gen 2. We have Kanto to deal with, so let's go fight red and blue. Blue and red? Yeah, blue and red. Blue's first. Let's go fight them. And we are going to have to change up the moveset a little bit because Kanto opens up the amount of TMs that we can get. And there's one very crucial one that I definitely want, especially when it comes to red. If you can guess that before the end of the video, point, put it in the comments and let me know. Because I want to see how um, in tune you guys are with how I'm thinking. Let's see how we do. Professor Elm tells us we can go to Kanto, so yeah, let's go have a quick chat to him. And we head off to Wallavine before going over to Kanto, beating all the gym leaders, and now we are going against Blue. So if you guessed it right, we are going with the Curse Agility strat. So what Curse does, it reduces your speed, but increases your attack and defense. Agility increases your speed. So all of that speed that we've just lost, we've completely got back, and we've maxed out attack and defense. Right now, Porygon is the most most powerful entity in the whole Pokemon world. <laughs> One return can even take... Oh no, it doesn't even take out a Rhydon. Come on, guys. <laughs> level 66 here. We are a very low level for this. And we sweep through Blue's team first time. This is what I wanted to do. This is, the, this is why I've kept Agility since the very beginning. Because I want to do this Agility Curse strat. And when it comes to red, pretty much we need a little bit of good RNG to be able to do this. We're at 5 hours 46 minutes. What time will we be when we beat him? So we are going to just try and take out this Pikachu in one. When it comes to the next one, we've set up and we've got return. I did speed through that bit of footage. And as you can see here, with full curse and full agility set up, we just sweep the entire battle. And we are level 67. It's only the legendaries that have been pretty much lower level than this. And Furret, of course. Furret was an absolute beast. And it was the Furret run that actually inspired me to use this um, strategy. Using curse and agility. Just broken. Although in the Furret run, it was um, curse amnesia. Either way. Porygon 2 has completed the game. We've returned Curse, Recover Agility. And we finished the game at 5 hours 54 minutes. So that, that final fight took us a, a, just over 10 minutes to complete. And there we go. That's the end of the video, guys. I really enjoyed this one. If you need to do a solo run in Gen 2, do a Porygon 2 run. It's very fun. Let's see what we get next time on the wheel. First up is Giraffe Rake. And I actually... With the introduction of Farigaraf in Gen 9, I'm actually... I'm, I've, it's, I've rediscovered my love for that Pokemon. Skipaloom is second, and considering how many times it's come up on the wheel pretty much in the last five videos, I might just do that one and get out of the way. Yeah, you know what? 
let's go with Squiff Plume. Just get out of the way because it's, it's been coming up so many times. If you got to this point in the video, I really appreciate it. Please smash that like and subscribe, you legends. And we will see you next week for the Skip Loom video, just to get out of the way. Take care, guys. See you later.